My name is Robert Solomon, and I'm the chairman of neurosurgery at Columbia University Irving Medical Center at New York Presbyterian Hospital. And I want to discuss today the treatment of intracranial aneurysms, specifically the identification and treatment of unruptured aneurysms. It's very common in the present world with all the MRI scans that are being done to identify intracranial aneurysms before they have ruptured. This is often a huge uh, favor to the patient to be able to find an aneurysm before it's caused a devastating intracranial hemorrhage. About 1% of the population is walking around with an intracranial aneurysm, so it's not that rare to find an aneurysm. However, the risk of rupture of an aneurysm is very low. In general, the risk of rupture is about 1% per year for an incidental aneurysm discovered on an MRI scan. However, that risk varies greatly depending on the size and location of the aneurysm. The average size of ruptured aneurysms that we see is seven millimeters, and that's about where the 1% line falls. Aneurysms that are much smaller than seven millimeters have a much smaller risk of rupture, and very small aneurysms in the order of three millimeters or four millimeters may have unmeasurably small risk of rupture depending on where they're located. On the other hand, larger aneurysms can carry a very high risk of rupture. And very large aneurysms sometimes carry a risk of rupture in the five to 10% uh, rate for an annual rupture risk. So these aneurysms need to be treated and each patient needs to be evaluated on an individual basis. Um, the treatment of the aneurysm depends on the age of the patient, the location of the aneurysm, and the type of treatment that is required for the uh, patient. Some of the patients require endovascular treatment, and we have techniques with intra intravascular stents, intravascular coils uh, to treat these aneurysms, and some patients still require open surgical techniques to treat aneurysms. And we have very uh, modern, minimally invasive surgical techniques to clip aneurysms that need to be treated surgically. So if patients require surgical treatment, the recovery from minimally evasive techniques is excellent, requiring two days in the hospital and less than a month before resuming all activities. In any event, each patient needs to be considered individually for their treatment. Some patients are best treated conservatively without any treatment necessary. Some patients require endovascular treatment and some patients require open surgical techniques. But each patient needs to be considered individually.